presence in this place. Teach us your word. Shape our lives, empower our spirits, transform our minds, and cause your enabling grace to be released upon us. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please welcome two or three people and you may have your seats. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What's the theme for January? What? Huh? Mm -hmm. There are three people who know the theme for the month. It's good to know the theme for the month. Hallelujah. You see, as God leads us as a church, every theme is representative of the things that God wants to do with us. You know, um, beginning with power. And the word has come from different dimensions this month on how we can begin with power. You can't start a race without power. So the race of 2024 requires the power of God. And that power is loaded in wisdom. That power is loaded in light. It's loaded in grace and different dimensions of preparations that we need. Hallelujah. You know, when you're running a race, you cannot fill your stomach with excess food. Oh, yeah. These are rules for natural races. I mean, natural races. You can't, you can't be the one running 100 meters, uh, uh, you know, in your group. And that early morning, just before you go for the race. You load up yourself with fufu, like two plates. We can predict what your position in the race will be from the beginning. You're going to come first from the back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So you have to stay light. You have to stay light. When you're climbing a mountain, mountain climbers know. They will tell you about certain things you can do, certain kinds of clothes you can wear. Even the shoes have to be shoes of a certain specification. They must have grip. Your knapsack or your rucksack or your backpack has to be very light with only the necessities inside of it. You can't carry too much load. As a matter of fact, the Bible corroborates that in more than one scripture. You find in the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews chapter 12 from verse 1, it says, uh, Wherefore, seeing that we are encompassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and seen that doth easily beset us and let us run. So you can't run with weights. You need to be light enough to get on your race. Hallelujah. And then Paul also teaches us some principles about running. Is that in 1 Corinthians chapter 9? He teaches us some principles about running. Hallelujah. So the race of 2024 requires you to be strategic, requires you to be prepared, requires you to be empowered. Today, responsibility for holiness. Responsibility for holiness. And I'll take a part of it in the first service uh, and then um, the second part in the second service. And in the third service, we will continue with uh, last week's teachings on finance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Being a Christian leaves us with a lot of responsibility. And I want to share these things from my heart to help, to strengthen, to encourage, and to inspire us today. There are teachings that are currently flying everywhere that are not from the heart of God. These are teachings from the heart of hell. These are teachings intended to pervert the workings of God in the lives of the believer and to position people for eternal damnation. We must be careful what we like to hear and what we want to hear and the places where we go. If it is not edifying, if it is not consistent with the word of God, be careful about it. Be careful about teachings that sound convenient. Teachings that give you an impression that the believer does not need any work. He does not need any responsibility. He does not need to do anything. All you need to do is live life the way you feel like, the way you like, and to set your rules of engagement and that you will make it to heaven. We've been sadly reviewing some of these things, you know, and I was speaking with my staff uh, maybe just a few days ago last week, and 
you know, we, 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 we were sharing some of these things. I've decided that we're going to take an entire session in church to bring out popular opinions that are causing people to fall by the wayside and to use the scriptures to debunk these things because there are believers who have fallen for these things. There are believers who are, you know, um, going astray because they have embraced some of these lies. I am told that you need to sin so that the blood of Jesus does not go to waste. That the blood of Jesus has been made available. That, you, that the only way the blood won't waste is if you sin. You have to sin so that the blood can, can be spent. You know, if not, we are wasting the blood. Jesus. We are in the days of itchy ears and there are people... In these places, people who love these things, people who like to hear these things. Be very careful, and that's my warning for you. Protect the salvation that was bought on that cross. Protect that salvation that has been delivered to you. Protect it, protect it, protect it. It is either the blood of Jesus cleansed completely or it did no work at all. The blood cannot cleanse you completely and you need to jump into the mud again. But you see, that already is contrary to scriptures because in a scripture I'm going to share another time. Talks of a backslider as someone who has returned to his vomit. And as the soul or the pig that has returned to his wallowing. We were called out. Out of darkness into his marvelous light. To show forth his praises. We were called out. We were not just washed and left in. So we can get back in the mud and then, we, and then we're washed again. Get back in the mud and then we're washed again. No, we were called out. However, there is provision that while we are walking, when we fail, we can be restored and we keep going. And that's where First John chapter 1, is that verse 9? That's where it comes in, where he says that if we what, uh, confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. That was written to a believer, a believer who errs in his work, a believer who misses it when he works, a believer who is in the process of perfection but still fails here and there. That is not referring to someone who decides to sin, who has embraced sin as a culture, who justifies sin and who lives in sin. Very different, very different. It's just a provision so that we stay in fellowship. With God. Be careful. When we were born again, we received the nature of God. In John chapter 1 and verse 12. For as many that received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. How are we sons of God? You cannot be a son of God if you don't have the nature of God. Because everything reproduces after its kind. Lions give birth to lions. Goats give birth to goats. Rats give birth to rats. We are only sons of God because we have received his very nature. His very nature. His very nature. It's important to know that holiness is the nature of God. 1 Peter chapter, four, chapter 1 from verse 14. 1 Peter chapter 1 from verse 14 to 16. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves... According to the former loss in your ignorance. Let me explain this. I'm reading from the King James. If you have a simpler translation, let me just, you know, explain this. Meaning as obedient children, now that we are born again, we live in obedience to the counsel of God, to the precepts of God, to the work of God, or to the words of God. And we don't pattern our lives according to our former desires. What's former lusts? how we were before we got born again. There must be a change in the life of a believer who has turned to the Lord now. A change that is remarkably different from how he was before he got born again. You cannot remain the same as you were before you got born again. You cannot continue to do the same things. You can't have the same lifestyle as you did before you got born again. So we do not pattern our lives according to 
the former loss, the way we behaved and acted and the things we did in our ignorance. In our ignorance. Verse 15 says, but as he which had called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. All manner of conversation. Of conversation means all kinds of lifestyle. There is no lifestyle of a believer that is excluded from conforming to the life of Christ. There is not one lifestyle of the believer that is excluded from conforming to the life of Christ. Everything we do, our language must conform to Christ. Our dressing must conform to Christ. Our dressing must glorify Christ. Our dressing must be reflective of the faith that we have now found. Our behavior must conform. Our habits must conform. As a matter of fact, there are things I will refuse to watch so that I do not corrupt the spirit of Christ on the inside of me. There are things I will not listen to so that I do not corrupt the spirit of Christ on the inside of me. Does the Bible not tell us in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33 that be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. It is not possible for you to expose yourself to the filth of the world and remain the same. It is not possible. It is not possible. Give me another translation of 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 33. Do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. Woo. Another one says, do not be tricked by false words. Evil company does damage to good behavior. My lifestyle must change. As a believer, I must separate from the kinds of people in my life, in my old life, who enabled me to do the things that were contrary to God. I don't go back and stay there and claim that, you know, it's okay. Praise the Lord. But as he which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Verse 16, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Hallelujah. So holiness is God's nature. We received it at new birth. We received it at new birth. We must be conscious of it. We must be conscious of it and make efforts to walk in it. The truth is, as we practice anything, we get established in it. Practice makes permanent. As you practice a thing, you get established in it. As a believer, you're going to now decide. Some people think that when you get born again, you know, uh, when you want to be in some kind of situation, the Holy Spirit will just come, just lift you up, carry you on his head, and throw you up. No, it's going to be you determining now, I want to please God. And for every action we take that is in line with God, we find the grace of God helping us. We find the grace of God helping us. One of the ways you're going to enjoy the grace of God in your life as a believer is when God sees obedience. Obedience refers to your actions in line with his expectation. When you take action in line with God's expectation, he makes grace available. He makes grace available. It is up to you to delete wrong numbers from your phone. The Holy Spirit is not going to come take your phone and begin to delete numbers. The Holy Spirit is not going to take your phone and delete pornography from it. It's going to be you deciding personally, intentionally to do it because you want to please the Lord. And for every action you take that is God word, you would find the grace of God made available for you to be established in these things to be established in these things hallelujah titus chapter 3 verse 4 and 5 says but after that the kindness and love of god our savior toward man appeared not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the holy spirit so our salvation brought us into a washing, a washing, a washing. We must keep ourselves washed. We must understand what stains and avoid what stains and maintain our washed nature. He brought us into a washing and a regeneration, a renewing, a renewing 
of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The new birth, the, 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 the God nature that we received at new birth, we must nurture. It's our responsibility to nurture that nature that we have received at new birth. Sin stains. And that's why the blood washes. The Holy Spirit's business is to renew and to regenerate. It is our business to maintain the work of God in our lives. I heard Paul write to the church and he said for them to, um, to, to work out their salvation with fear and trembling. Did he mean that they should get saved again? No. They had already received salvation. But he said work it out. Work it out. It's up to you to stop going to that place where there is wrong influence on your life. It's up to you to now choose your relationships, choose your activities. It's up to you to determine no more lying in my life. It's up to you to determine no more fornication in my life. No more adultery. No more cheating. No more covetousness. It's up to you to determine it. You must work it out. And how do you work it out? You have the power of God on your inside. You have the Holy Ghost resident in you. You have the help that is available. You have all that it takes to ensure that you don't return to the mud out of which Christ has pulled you. God is coming for a church without spot, a church without blemish. Ephesians 5 verse 27 says that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The church of God is supposed to be holy and without blemish, holy and without blemish, holy and without blemish. I have heard that once you're born again, irrespective of what you do, you stay born again. It is said that half truth is worse than a complete lie. Now, that is half truth. It's half truth because when you're born again, you're born again. That is the truth. The life of God is in you. But we have responsibilities to maintaining that life in us. It can be lost. It can be lost. It can be lost. The man Judas walked with Jesus side by side, slept in the same house, ate from the same plate, lived with him three years and a half. But that same man, right in the presence of Jesus, opened his heart to the devil. The Bible tells us Satan entered into Judas. It was Satan who entered into Judas. And this guy, first of all, that's not even where it started. He had been stealing little by little by little. The things you don't deal with today will grow into monsters in your life. He was stealing from the poor. John tells us that he was taking from out of the poor. He always stole from the poor. And I believe when it was time for Jesus to die, he just imagined, where will I be stealing from again? You know, my income has been, please don't die. The man said you die. Don't go. The man said you go. Now, what am I going to do? Final cash out. Final cash out. So, when he heard the people say that anybody who can lead us to the arrest of this man is going to get a reward, he went and negotiated. 30 pieces of silver, that was no small money. That was no small money. That was a fortune. 30 pieces of, you know, silver. So he imagined, okay, since I can't steal again, he calculated what you're stealing per year, per year, per year, and said, okay, you know, maybe something that can, at least the next 10 years, until I get a new profession where I can be arranging myself. This one will last me. I'll eat it small, small, you know. And then he also thought of investment, thought of real estate. Oh, yes. He thought of real estate. The guy was smart. What did he buy? Was it not a parcel of land? Yes. That was called Akhil Dama or something like that. Right? He went and bought land. Big boy was about to build a mansion. But something was lost. His relationship with God had gone. He had severed ties. Not only with his master. He severed ties with God. He severed ties 
with God. He lost it. That same devil drove him to go and hang himself. A man who walked side by side Jesus. That's why the Bible says to guard your heart with all diligence. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. Jesus teaching in the same light. I believe in Matthew chapter 12. He said, look, out of the heart comes every kind of wickedness. It is out of the heart. That's where lust is conceived. That's where adultery is conceived. That's where fornication is conceived. They come out of the heart. Out of the heart. If you want to overcome sin, you want to live above sin, guard your heart. If that thought does not get established in your heart, it is very likely not going to find expression in your life. If that thought does not get established in your heart, it is very likely not going to find expression in your life. I'd like you to know that salvation is a serious thing. The death of Jesus on the cross is a serious matter. The shedding of the blood of God. Paul says blood of God. Did you know that the blood of Jesus is referred to as the blood of God? Oh, come on now. Let us, let us see the Bible. I have just a few minutes. But let's see one or two things as I draw to a close in the first service. It's called God's own blood. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Acts, somewhere in Acts. Do we have it yet? Okay. Uh, I'll find it. I'll find it right now. And if you guys find it before me, just shoot it up on the screen. Uh, is that Acts uh, 20? Mm. All the Bible study students we have here. You can't find the blood of God. We have to find it today. Did somebody find it? It's an act. Act 20 and verse 28. Okay. So take it therefore unto yourselves and to the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. That's a charge to us, right? To feed the church of God, which he had purchased. He had purchased with his own blood. The bl now, that's the difference between the blood of Jesus and the blood of every other righteous man that had died before and after Christ. Their blood could not handle the sin of the world. No, it couldn't. Yes, righteous men died. Righteous men were martyred. Prophets were killed and all. But their blood was human blood. Jesus' blood was God's own blood. And someone is trying to... Now, we've done teachings in this. And I really like to encourage you. If, if you want to grow in your knowledge of the word of God, it's important to explore our teaching library. Okay, get these things and listen to them. Don't just be a Sunday, Sunday Christian who shows up to hear, oh, there's an anointed pastor, you just show up to hear him. That's not enough. That's not enough. That's not enough. Get the word of God into your room. Get the word of God into your phone. Get the word of God into your space. As you take a walk from one point to another, your headsets, get the word of God in. Praise the Lord. Jesus was born when the ovum of Mary was overshadowed by the power of the Holy Ghost. So the fertilization of that ovum was not from a sperm. The fertilization of that ovum was the power of God. Why did the ovum need to be fertilized? He needed a body. Jesus existed with the Father before he came to earth. Several scriptures. In John 17, he's praying and he says, The glory that I had with you before he came. In Philippians, we're also told that he was God, but he came and died as a man. Okay? In John chapter 1, we also see in the beginning was the word. The word was 
with God and the word was God. If you read down in verses that 14 or 16, it said the word was made flesh and dwelt amongst men. So the process of Jesus leaving heaven to earth in heaven, that was spirit. <laughs> okay? That was spirit. Now he needed body to interact with the physical earth. And that's where the ovum of Mary was important. God is a God of principles. Oh, you just imagine that God would have clothed him with the body and just thrown him down. No, he didn't come as God when he came to die. He came as a man. He was God, but he came to earth as a man. He had to be anointed of the Holy Ghost to preach. To what? Preach. He came as a man. He came as a man. He's a pattern son. The Bible says he has left us his steps. If he just came as God, we would never be able to, you know, meet up. He came as a man, the perfect example. And whatever he could achieve in his earthly walk, we can if we follow his steps. Anyways, so the blood produced from that fertilization was not human blood. That's why it is referred to as God's own blood. God's own blood. Blood in the class. Blood, <laughs> blood that no man could have been able to, sh to, uh, to spend for the redemption of humanity. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, the salvation we have received is serious business. It came at a price. We can't be running left, right, and center and doing things the way we want it and claim that the grace of God covers us. No. Shall we continue to sin that grace may abound? God forbid is what the Bible says. God forbid. God forbid. You die in fornication today, you will wake up in hellfire. I'm telling you the truth. And you better hear me now. I'm telling you the truth. If you don't take away adultery from your life and you die in that state... Your soul will perish. This is a very old-fashioned teaching in our day and time. Because we have to make it nice. Don't worry. Even if you're sleeping around, don't worry. Grace covers you. You know, all that matters is that you know you have Jesus in your life. Uh, you know, it's all fine. That's the way to hell. That's the way to hell. That's the way to hell. I love you enough to tell you the truth at any cost. At any cost. At any cost. Let's close. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 to 20. A few more scriptures and we close. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Now we've been joined unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We are one spirit with God. What's the charge given to us? Verse 18. Flee fornication. He didn't say stay in fornication. Grace covers you. He says flee it. Flee it. Flee it. There's no special service you are doing if you sleep with a pastor. Grace is not sexually transmitted. Pastor and in hell, you too. I'm telling you that because I've heard a lot of nasty things. In this town, there are places that have become cults. I know of a man in this town, notorious for threesomes and twosomes and all, and they preach a nasty grace message in that place to cover up this stupidity. You come from a church where you are well taught the word of God and you go and sit down there. And there's always something to catch the fancy of people. You see, people who are in error, who have refused correction, they go the extra mile to do things that can blind the discernment of people. I know of a certain place here. Everything nice, everything cozy, everything, it's not a problem. It's not the coziest place in town. But, I mean, they go the extra mile. And tell you that it's grace. It's grace, it's grace, it's grace. I had a young lady who lived in my house who went to this particular place. 
And every time by the Holy Ghost, I've told this before, and I'm just going to tell it again briefly. Every time she went to this place, I didn't know the fellow. I didn't know what was going on there. And sincerely, I don't care. But now, you see, I have a responsibility to you and to warn you. And that's why I'm saying these things. This young lady lived in my house. She was blessed with a gift of singing. And every now and then, I will call her. Say, I hope that man is not disturbing you. You know, when she talked of a certain place and blah, 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 blah. I said, just by the Holy Spirit. I mean, I knew nothing of what was going on there. She will come from her room, for example. Uh, maybe she's going through the living room to go to the kitchen. And we walk past. And I'll I was stop her and say, I hope. <laughs> you know, just the way I joke and plead. But it was the Holy Spirit. All of the times I was asking her, she was already in an adulterous relationship with a fellow. I didn't know. You see, when we die, you will have a picture played of messages you heard, of times you were rebuked, of the days you were in the wrong place, your pastor's call came, how you busied it or you hit the phone or you put it on flight mode. You will see it. You see, God is a just God. Oh, yes. I tell you the truth. How someone called you to have made you an avert doing whatever it was or going to a certain place, you will find the grace of God. You will find that God made help available to you and you constantly rejected it. You constantly rejected it. You will see that just when you were to have an appointment with a certain person, you had made up your mind, this money I'm taking it. What the heck? I'll just do it once. That's when they called you and said, there is a meeting or, you know, a pastor wants to see you or you need to do one thing and you lied that you have traveled. Hallelujah. And she continued like that. Later on, she said to me that even in her dreams, I will meet her and warn her. All of this was happening. I know daddy. Oh, yeah. Daddy, no. Ah, daddy. But I didn't stop. And I didn't know why I didn't stop. Because I wasn't doing it by myself. At some point, I gave her a nickname that connected with the person's name. Just, you know, I, I didn't know the Holy Ghost was on her trying to deliver her. From this mess because later on she wrote me a very long letter after everything had had spot and said even in her dreams on several occasions that I will meet her and warn her and warn her that she knew she was in error she should come out she should con confess but never did never did never did never did I started hearing of this man coming to drop out when I would travel coming to drop her at home 11 p.m close to midnight. Sometimes she won't sleep in the house and claim there was an all night something and this and that and that. It was all an adulterous relationship. Before I knew, I bought it for the man. Before I knew, one day I said, I just sat, see, <laughs> I just sat on my dining table, come, sit down, go and do a HIV test. By word of knowledge, there was no sign, nothing, healthy looking, everything. And unfortunately, it was what it was. Listen, if you don't heed correction, one day you will find yourself in a zone that makes it difficult. From that report, this fellow never remained the same again until the day of her death. Never remained the same again. We tried everything to help. Everything. Everything. Don't harden your heart when you hear the word of God. Don't harden your heart. I say these things with pain. If you lived with your father in the Lord and you were that evil, what if? You lived with your father in the Lord. Your heart was that hard. It's unfortunate. There's plenty of story in between that I cannot tell here today. But don't harden your heart. The mercy of God is available. 
and take it at every opportunity, God makes it available. Every opportunity. Every opportunity. Every opportunity. I'll continue in the second service. But verse 19, verse 18 says, Flee fornication, every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. The man she aborted for is still alive. Yes. And still leading many others to abortions. You think you've heard anything from BBC? You're about to hear a big one from your own city. And these things have piled up through the years. I was shocked recently when I heard that someone from here still goes to that kind of place. What are you looking for? Please go to somewhere decent. If you think you need to go somewhere to be edified, go to somewhere decent. What's the attraction? What? A pastor sleeping with members is not of God. He may have been one time, but he has missed it. I'm not talking of someone who, maybe who was found in error and came out. God helped him. No, that's not what we're talking about here. Talking of someone who has built a message and doctrine to justify adultery. That is where the problem is. And that's my emphasis. That's my emphasis. Run for your life. You think it's spiritual service to sleep with a man of God? No. You, you are ruining your soul. You're ruining your soul. There's a catalog of people whose lives are ruined. I heard of a nurse in the place who came out and talked about how she was the coordinator of abortions in the place. Yes, she's out of the place and she's out of the country. But talked about these things. You know how many abortions have been committed in that place? On a steady, steady basis. What are you preaching? And you, what are you looking for there? What are you looking for? I don't care what gift you have in your life. If character does not match it, it's a pathway of destruction. Satan is gifted. Oh, yes. Music. And that's why one of the biggest attacks, one of the biggest infiltrations into the body of Christ is through music. It's true music. Because that's his specialty. The gift of a man make a room for him. Isn't it? <laughs> Let's rise this morning. That's the truth. That's his gift. He knows the music that will catch your attention. And let me tell you, gospel ministers, there is no worldly music that is necessary for voice training. We have enough gifts in the body of Christ. Loaded with the spirit of God to help you train your voice. Stop corrupting your spirit in the name of God trying to train your voice. Beyonce is not your music model. Go and look for a godly person to teach you how to sing. Stop it. I don't listen to worldly musical. I'm just using it to train. There is no difference. There's no difference. It has entered your spirit. You have mastered the lyrics and that spirit has entered your spirit. It has entered your spirit. What you constantly expose yourself to brings you into the spirit behind the speaker or singer. How did they all end? How did they all end? Don't celebrate gifts at the expense of character. Don't celebrate gifts, especially us as believers. Let 
their music be for them. Let's stay with what edifies. Whitney Houston was a wonderful gift. Wonderful gift. Started out in the choir. Father was a pastor. But there's always a call from the world. How do you keep this kind of special gift in the choir? Come on. I'll give you the world. Make you money. Then all the juicy offers. We'll start with a brand new car. House in Lecky. Well furnished. Give you an advance 50 million naira to just, you know, sort out yourself and, you know, settle in. Yeah. And then you sell your soul. You can't sing what you want to sing. The lyrics are given to you to sing. You can't perform where you want to perform. You have to be in the clubs. You have to be in the places. They must make that money times 100. At the end of it, you find yourself, you have entered drugs, you've entered smoke, you've entered, you are a shadow of yourself. You receive money at the expense of your soul. What shall he profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? And what we always think, the mistake that, oh, being in Christ, doing it God's way does not pay, is a lie from hell. Is a lie from hell. Is a lie from hell. And by the way, if doing it God's way does not pay according to what man says, I would rather stay with God and keep my soul. I would rather stay with God and keep my soul. We've blinded ourselves from all the believers who have prospered doing it right. And we have filled our examples with all the people of the world who have had successes. Why are they your example? Is because that's where your heart is. You need to cleanse your heart. You need to get to that place that says, I'll serve God at all costs. Let me tell you, Christianity is not cheap. It's going to need a sacrifice from you. Jesus said, if you're going to follow me, take up your cross daily and follow me. Christianity is not a bread and butter Christianity. There's a price to pay. There are things to forego. I can't take this offer because I'm a Christian. You mean you don't want it? I can't take it because I'm a Christian. Because I'm a Christian. What if you don't get it another way? So be it. What God cannot give me may I never have. May I never have. That's the believer's devotion. That's the believer's consecration. Help me Lord. Lift your hands. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Lord, establish me in you. Establish me in your love. Establish me in your love. In the name of Jesus. Establish me in your love. Establish. Pray for yourself, church. Pray for yourself. No returning to sin today. No, no, no. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. It's my determination to make it, to make it, to make it, to make it to heaven. It's my determination to see Jesus face to face. It's my determination. It's my determination. Oh God, give me an appetite that pleases you. Fill me with desires for you. Help me set my affection on things that are above. Deliver me from that which destroys and corrupts the spirit. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. You may not like my message today, but I hope it edifies you. You may not like my message today, but I hope it preserves you. I would like to see you on that day. When we meet on the other side, when we meet in eternity, I would like to shake hands with you and say, you made it brother, you made it sister. That's what matters. It's good to identify whatever is leading you contrary to God. There are clothes you may have to burn today. There are relationships you may have to burn today. There are habits you may have to burn today so that you can protect and preserve your soul.
I pray for you that the Lord will keep you. I pray for you that the love of God will prosper in your life. I pray for you that the power of God will prosper in your life. I pray that the spirit of holiness will prosper in your life. I pray for you that your appetites for God will flourish. I pray for you that your affection will be set on things above, not on things beneath. I pray for you that that which destroys be separated from your life. I pray for you. Every habit, every satanic influence that has shifted your heart from the Lord be broken in the precious name of Jesus. Be broken in the precious name of Jesus. I pray that you are established in the love of God. You are established in the faith of Christ in the name of Jesus. Can we bow our heads? You're here tonight. You're here this morning and you haven't received Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, wherever you are. You know you need amendment. You know you need to return to Him. The love of God is in this house this morning. His grace and mercy are here. While you're still alive, now you have an opportunity to get it right. Lay your hand on your chest if you're truly, truly determined. You're truly, truly, truly determined. You say, Lord, I just want to follow you. And I'm not ashamed to make that decision right now. God bless you. I see all those hands there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Lay your hand there as we pray together. Say, Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. I am a sinner. Today, I turn. I turn to you. I acknowledge that you came and died for me. And you rose up again for my sake. Wash me clean with your blood. Come into my life and live in me. From today, I belong to you and I give myself to you. Help me, oh God. Fill me with your grace and power in the precious name of Jesus. Usually we just pray and let the people, but I feel a leading this morning to shake hands with people. I believe that a change of story, I believe a change of story has come to someone's life. If you said that prayer with me, please come. I feel, I, I, I feel a need to just hold your hands and pray for you this morning. Please come quickly. Be the first to come. You said that prayer, be the first to come. Be the first to come. Come, come, come. All of you, all of you, all of you. I saw several hands. I saw several hands. I feel, I feel a need to hold your hands. Please don't miss this opportunity. All of you who said the prayer. I saw three young men there. All of you, please come. All of you, all of you. I will leave 20 more seconds. Please come, please come, please come. Hallelujah. Clap for them as they come. Let me tell you something. You never know when the mercy clock stops ticking in a man's life. We know, oh, God loves us unconditionally. It is true. But there is a mercy clock. You never know when it stops ticking. And you see in a congregation like this or wherever it is you make that decision. When you make a decision for Christ, be bold about it. It's not a hidden thing. No. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. And I saw all the hands that made that decision. I'm giving you one last opportunity. Please come. I want to pray for you. And if you will not, I'll just pray for these people here. Hold my hands. Put, put your hands in my hands. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Ata kase prata yada kishda, rota braka kaka le bahayata. Sese protoske prata kata kole se prati yada ka. Lepete ke so protoske ta prati skata. Lord, the grace of God for a new beginning in their lives. In the name of Jesus, I stand with you today. I release grace and peace over your life. Alla baraka tos pratishka rada ushkata ledeka tere kuspraka. I pray for you. I pray for you. May grace prevail in your life. May mercy prevail in your life. I release power upon you. Today I forbid every satanic working that is contrary to you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I release you into the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are blessed in Jesus' name. You are blessed in the name of Jesus. I like you all to know that the love of God is upon your lives. 
today in Jesus name God bless you amen hallelujah